The views expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome to this week's Insights. I'm Sherry Stewart. Today we're joined by Lieutenant Derek Carroll with the Michigan State Police. Thank you for joining me today, Lieutenant. Well, thank you for having me. And you know, with January being recognized as National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month, we know that a lot of community stakeholders, including our law enforcement uh, community, is uh, stepping out in uh, bringing greater awareness to this issue. It's a large issue in large cities as well as smaller towns like Alpena. Yes. Absolutely. So we're going to be talking about that today. I know uh, before we went on, we were talking about this actually a crime that happens a lot of time right under our nose and we don't even realize it. Yes, a lot of times with this uh, human trafficking, it is a hidden crime. Yeah. It is right in front of us and we don't know it. And there, it's so important for people to be aware of this and, and look for signs of mm -hmm. human trafficking. And a lot of times people um, think human smuggling and human trafficking are the same thing where it's not. Right. Human smuggling is actually moving people from point to point. Okay. Human trafficking is like you said, and I appreciate that the word you use, slavery. Mm -hmm. It is the modern day slavery of servitude, forced mm -hmm. servitude, labor, or acts of prostitution against someone's will. It is such a devastating uh, crime for, for people that are actually rescued from that type of situation. Tell us, what are some of the signs that people could be looking for that you don't even realize is possibly happening even in maybe your own neighborhood? Well, one thing to look for is if you see someone in the neighborhood, maybe you're not familiar with them and they don't get out much, are they being controlled? Is their movements being controlled? Uh, people from overseas who come here or who are victims, a lot of times they'll take, the perpetrators will take their documentation so they have no means of escape, no identification, they feel trapped, mm -hmm. and they will restrict their movement. Mm -hmm. So if all of a sudden you see someone in, in an area or neighborhood, a home, uh, and they're not free to come and go as they please, or sure. people are bringing them things, food or s such, or a lot of people mm -hmm. at one residence. That's another sign of uh, forced uh, servitude or labor too. You could have a lot of people in one residence that just doesn't seem to fit. Mm -hmm. Now, is there one certain population that's more susceptible? Is it our, our youth? Is it uh, seniors? Who is more susceptible to being unfortunately caught up in something like this? Statistics show most people, most victims of human trafficking mm -hmm. are women and children, mm -hmm. young children. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's really the, the set, but there, there's different areas too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually three areas of human trafficking we, we look at or recognize sure. uh, when we're reporting this. One of them is, of course, servitude, mm -hmm. and that, that would be your maid services, uh, cooks, uh, yeah. dishwashers, such mm -hmm. as that. Then you have forced labor or laborers at the mm -hmm. construction sites, and the other one is uh, prostitution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just very devastating. Now, in terms of uh, the state of Michigan, um, are there certain areas that you've seen a lot more uh, of this happening? Are there certain cities or areas or towns? Uh, there is, and the most reported areas uh, are downstate, but oddly enough, and to my surprise when mm -hmm. I checked the statistics, Mackinac Island ranks number six for reports of uh, human trafficking. Now it doesn't mean they're confirmed cases yeah. but are actually calls to the hotline so people can look into it and the proper authorities can check it out. That is very surprising, extremely surprising because when you think of Mackinac you think of uh, just tourists mm -hmm. and just having a great time. You certainly don't think about something as uh, devastating and traumatic as, as something like uh, human trafficking. No, and in 2018, the Michigan State Police, we did a sting in northern Michigan, wow. the uh, prostitution sting. We had an undercover female uh, mm -hmm. trooper, and we arrested 35 Johns. We had oh 35 convictions, mm -hmm. successful convictions. And there's a nexus there because just this uh, month, we had a woman brought up from downstate mm -hmm. who was uh, a victim of human trafficking, and she was forced into servitude and prostitution just in northern Michigan. So there is, there is a... Uh, a match between those two uh, crimes and it, it, it's horrible. It is. Now are there any tips that the Michigan State Police is giving out for uh, how do you protect yourself? So is it something that we could tell our young uh, females, our teens? I know a lot of times social media can make you uh, vulnerable on um, certain sites and things like that. So is there some type of, uh, are there some uh, educational prevention tips that we can share with them? Oh absolutely. Uh, again, you, you hit social media is another mm -hmm. big one. That's, yeah. that's for uh, especially luring young women, yeah. uh, whether they think it's a modeling career mm -hmm. or uh, some kind of a job that 
they're going to get or uh, something like that, uh, be aware. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. People usually just don't solicit you online saying, hey, you look pretty. Yeah. Why don't you come and, and get a photo shoot? Mm -hmm. And they get lured in that way. A lot of times it's um, maybe drugs. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll start out in that avenue. And then to support a habit, mm -hmm. uh, they'll take advantage of that, the dealers, and, and force the women in prostitution mm -hmm. by getting them hooked on drugs in, in that way. Mm -hmm. So th those are just two of the areas. And then we also have uh, Truckers Against Trafficking that started okay, up here recently, yeah. and they are training truckers across the nation to identify mm -hmm. uh, victims of human trafficking and to call hotlines uh, so they can report these at rest areas mm -hmm. and restaurants and places that they see it at. Yeah, I saw that. I think I saw a press release not too long ago about, about having our truckers even get involved too because being on the road, they see a lot of things, I'm sure. Yeah, and really the public are our eyes and ears for yeah. this. But like I said, it's a, it's a hidden crime, mm -hmm. and we don't always see it just on on patrol or going to calls, mm -hmm. but we do look for it when we go to certain calls. If you, mm -hmm. we go to somewhere, we see signs of maybe there might be a lot of people living in one okay. uh, home yeah. or maybe one business where the employees aren't free to leave mm -hmm. at all times. That's you know those are signs of human trafficking. Okay. Now, if somebody believes that they are, uh, you know, susceptible to being human traffic, they getting close to uh, somehow being in a situation, what can they do? Is there a hotline? Should they call their local police? What are the steps that they can take if they feel as though, feel as though they're, they're um, you know, in danger of being caught up in that crime? Yeah. The easiest thing to do is you don't have to memorize the number, call 911. Okay. If you feel you're a victim, if you feel you're, uh, a perpetrator is after you or you feel me, call 911. Mm -hmm. That's an emergency line. It's easy to remember. You can call it from anywhere and tell them where you're at and what help you need and we'll get the officers there. Excellent. Now, uh, lastly, are there uh, any more times of the year that you see that uh, people are more susceptible? Are you seeing a spike in this maybe in the summer months or winter months or is it just kind of fluid all throughout the year? Uh, I would say just from knowing northern Michigan, mm -hmm. probably you would see it more in the summertime mm -hmm. because we don't have the population to uh, for the tourist industry, industry all the time. Yeah, and right. so you're gonna have, uh, you know, agriculture, mm -hmm. that could be another one. Yeah. And I'm not saying all, all migrant workers compare sure, victims to human tracking, yeah. but, but there could be, there's, there's an area yeah. right there. Uh, hotels and motels mm -hmm. with uh, maids mm -hmm. and uh, service industry there. Uh, that's just probably one of the bigger times for us. And again, I think that's why you probably get more calls on mm -hmm. Mackinac Island yeah. is because people see that and they're like, okay, we got a lot of people here. Maybe this person doesn't look right and they'll make a right. call. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, proprietor was mm -hmm. engaged in human trafficking, sure. but that's where we get a lot of calls at that. That is really surprising. So I like that you say they don't have to memorize a certain number. We all know 911. So if you feel as though uh, you feel threatened or you see something, we say see something, say something. Yes. So um, be proactive. And, Absolutely. And, and, and watch your children and certainly watch uh, the time that you spend on social media. I know. And I also heard uh, that uh, sometimes walking through the malls, I've heard some stories that people have been uh, approached by bad actors in the mall. So that's maybe a, perhaps another area. Oh yeah, I mean, anytime, mm -hmm. you know, these these perpetrators, these mm -hmm. these people, they will find where the people are that they're yeah. looking for. And a mall would be a great place yeah. for uh, young women. You might try mm -hmm. to get into a modeling or something like that, or like I said, a promise of a great job, yeah. and then lure them into uh, um, whatever situation you want to get them in. Yeah, so lots of things to be aware of. So, Lieutenant, I want to thank you for joining me for this segment. It's been uh, really informative uh, about uh, national slavery and human trafficking and what people can do if they see something, say something, and how to keep yourself safe. So uh, there's more coming up on Insights right after this break. Well, welcome back. Joining me for this segment is Janine Colts and Jillian Ferguson with Hope Shores Alliance. And we are talking now about Stalker Awareness Month. Okay, and there's a lot to talk about with that. I know in our, our earlier interview today, we were talking about human trafficking and uh, sex trafficking, but this is a little bit different, somewhat related, a little bit different. So educate us about that. Sure, um, so Stalking Awareness Month, what we're trying to really put focus on is um, the prevalence with which this happens. Um, as you mentioned, I'm sure you're very educated on a lot of things, weren't aware of this though. Right, right. Um, we're really trying to put a focus on how um, really many of us are vulnerable to stalking, um, especially those who are in domestic violence relationships or who were sexually assaulted, um, and really how serious this is. Um, it is a crime mm -hmm. in all 50 states, including Michigan, 
and um, that there are remedies for folks who um, feel like they are being stalked at this time. Mm -hmm. And so when you were, we were talking on camera, um, stalking is not what we may have thought it is. It's not the dark alley. It's, it's a little bit uh, more involved than that. So educate us a little bit on that. Yeah, the thing is, is with a lot of different types of violence, it doesn't just look like one thing. Right. right. So we might have an image of it in our head of what stalking looks mm -hmm. like via media or via posters we see, but it can look like a lot of different things. And it's difficult to say this is what stalking is because we don't want to limit the definition in the sense or if survivors feel like something isn't right, something probably isn't right and we just need to trust them on that. Right. But it can vary from um, the use of social media or text messages or calls or I think the legal or the legal definition is two or more instances of unwanted contact that would cause a reasonable person to be fearful. Sure. But that can look like gifts showing up on your doorstep um, without permission or somebody showing up at your work to surprise you or it can look like a lot of different things and um, that's where it becomes problematic is that we can't define it, it's not something concrete, but it really just comes down to instinct um, and if something isn't right to access the resources and help available to you. Right, because you know if something just doesn't feel, feel right. So in your work, are you working primarily with women that are uh, become victims of uh, being stalked by somebody? Is yeah, I mean, this can honestly happen to children. I mean, yeah. this can, um, it's, it's, not, it's not restrictive to one gender. Okay. Um, what we're really um, hopeful is that um, people don't think, well, I'm, I'm a woman, this is a man, this must be stalking. Right. Um, I would say with domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, so many survivors come to us and they're not saying, I am a victim. They're saying what Jillian was saying, mm -hmm. something's not right. It's not as bad as some people. Um, right. Nobody's hit me, there hasn't yeah. been a gun, um, mm -hmm. so maybe it's not. Um, I would say a lot of first interactions with Hope Shores Alliance is having a conversation and saying something doesn't feel right, but I'm not, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure how to make this better. Um, and we offer free confidential services and options. Regardless of gender. Yeah. 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 Well, I like what you're doing. You're using social media to educate the public about that. You're doing something called Fact Friday. Mm -hmm. And I love that you've been doing that this entire month. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, with all of our awareness months, we try to integrate education and educational yeah. piece into that. Mm -hmm. And so the Fact Friday is really just about making people aware that this is very real mm -hmm. via statistics. Like, yeah. we don't want people just to care because there's big numbers, yeah. but the big numbers are there. Yeah. So Fact Friday is really speaking to the dynamics of stalking and how many people are affected by it and what it can look like and just the educational piece that we think is really important to help raise awareness around the issue. We're also doing a series. Yeah. Um, let's talk about it. Okay, um, I like that too. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're focusing on um, how technology impacts stalking. Yes. So it's a four-week series. Mm -hmm. um, we've already had the first week with our executive director, Val Williams, okay. um, talking um, kind of what we did, like the blanket statement, um, yeah. here's what stalking is, mm -hmm. and then getting a little bit more into Hope Shores Alliance services. Yeah. Um, I'm think on week three, mm -hmm. and we're talking about what remedies there are legally, civilly, those sure. kinds of things. And then lastly, we'll have law enforcement um, able to give their perspective as well. So we're really excited. Yeah, and you're very busy. So tell me a little bit more about the services that you all provide. I know this is a major campaign that you're you're passionate about, yeah. the educating with the Fact Friday, but what else do uh, you do at the Hope Shores Alliance? With any of our services, they're so survivor-led, right? So we have a long list of services that we provide regularly, but really we don't know what services will be offered to a survivor until they walk through our doors and tell us, this is what I'm looking for, this is where I need help and support, or where, and we just work from an empowerment-based approach. Um, and so Janine can kind of speak to some of the personal protection order help and the yeah. safety planning we can do. Yeah, what, what we try to do with everybody um, is, is find out what makes sense for them, um, which means looking at their schedule, what their needs are, um, what makes them feel safe, and um, very importantly too, looking at um, the abuse tactics that have been used against them. Um, one of the things Jillian mentioned is a personal protection order um, that that makes it so that a survivor can say, here are places that this um, stalker has no business going. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a civil order, a judge can sign it. Um, and it really does 
help law enforcement be able to go to a place before um, a catastrophic event has happened sure. and be able to say, if you come back here, I'm going to arrest you, or perhaps you violated this order, I'm going to arrest you now. Um, before I did this work, I genuinely thought, well, if there's a problem, law enforcement comes and they fix it, and not realizing limitations and that we don't want to live in a world where law enforcement's arresting everybody. Right. Um, they're peacekeepers, right. so it's a tool that helps everybody if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we first and foremost talk to survivors, find out what their goals are and help them meet them. And a personal protection order is absolutely something that makes a lot of people feel safer and actually are safer in our community. Yeah, and it's usually a piece of the, the safety plan too. It's just talking about what makes you feel safe and what, cause, or what can help actually um, increase your safety and that sense of safety and living in a rural area that can look a lot like knowing where your cell phone works and right. just a lot of every element that goes into safety and that complicated issue and just working alongside of the survivor to establish a plan and yeah. make sure they know they have resources available. And altering the person who has been making you feel fearful. Right. A lot of times when folks go to their friends or their school or their work um, Nobody wants to believe that somebody they love is being harmed. Right. So there's a lot of, are you sure? Are you just being dramatic? We've all had bad breakups. Right. Um, and people are saying, well, get rid of your cell phone. Get off of social media. Yeah. Change this, do that. Um, it's not practical in this world to no. not have a cell phone anymore. No, it's not. No. <laughs> we no. all need the internet. Right. Um, and having a camera in your pocket when you're being stalked is probably actually a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what we've learned um, in this movement is that um, when you completely terminate mm -hmm. a relationship, relationship um, with an abuser, with a stalker, um, that's when things are most dangerous. So getting rid of your cell phone is often not a good idea anyway. Absolutely. Well, we are wrapping up this segment. I want to thank you two for coming out to me, Janine Colts and Jillian Ferguson with Hope Shores Alliance. And is there a website uh, folks can go to or web, uh, your mm -hmm. Facebook page where people can go get that uh, Friday uh, fact? Yeah. yeah. Hopeshores.org is our website and we have a 24-hour help and support line at one 800 396 Six nine one two nine as well. Okay, well, thank you, ladies, again for joining us for this segment, and we Absolutely. will be back with more of insights. Well, welcome back to Insights. I'm Sherry Stewart, and joining me for our last segment here is Michelle Smith with the New Life Christian Fellowship. Thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure, Sherry. And we're continuing on with our conversation uh, earlier uh, in the uh, episode. We were talking about uh, human trafficking and uh, Stalker Awareness Month, but we're going to close out this segment talking about how uh, the faith-based community plays a part in helping people find wholeness after they or if they have been uh, victims of human or sex trafficking. And so what role do you play? I know you've been very uh, active in the community providing uh, prevention tips, awareness tips, but what exactly uh, are you doing this calendar year? Well, this calendar year, we don't actually have anything scheduled at this time. There's some things in the um, works that haven't been confirmed yet, okay. but we're looking at probably bringing a speaker back into our community again okay. on that topic to provide continuing uh, awareness and, mm -hmm. and equipping for our community. And I know you've been heavily uh, involved in the past uh, with your uh, organization, uh, Woven. So tell me a little bit about how, how you help with, with, this, uh, with this group in your, in your church. Okay. Woven is our the arm of um, our women's ministry mm -hmm. arm at New Life Christian mm -hmm. Fellowship. And um, our group is very, very active. And we became increasingly aware of human trafficking right. and just the seriousness of, of this whole issue in our country. Mm -hmm. um, some of the statistics that were really shocking to us were that right now the average age of a young girl who's being human trafficked is 13 years of age. I know, I'm, I saw that, it's and incredible. That's the average age, yeah. so it's the age level is dropping. Mm -hmm. So we just became um, aware of that and we felt like we needed to do something proactive, yeah. not just for us, not just to help us be more aware, but mm -hmm. to help our community be more aware. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about that. So we have this statistic, 13 years old, that's just, it's even hard to process that. So, and I know that you have worked with women that have actually survived um, this horrific situation. Tell me how you have helped them uh, find their life again, if you will. Okay, sure. Well, I've worked with women mm -hmm. from all different walks of life and all different ages, but um, I found that sexual assault is very, very prevalent with women, even here in our own community. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the 
key things that I began to realize is that when a woman is assaulted or sexually abused, um, it really fractures everything about her as, an, as a person. It fractures her identity as a woman, her um, sexuality, you know, um, many times they just detach from their emotions. Mm -hmm. And so one of the um, key things that I've found is being able to help them connect with God, mm -hmm. just being able to experience God's love and His mercy and mm -hmm. His forgiveness, um, or, or His mercy and His empowering them to be able to forgive. Yeah. That's a big thing. It's a hard thing. That has but to be a hard it's thing. It's <laughs> tremendously hard, but um, I'm a nurse also by okay. profession. Mm -hmm. And so in the medical profession, the studies are, sh are coming out showing that forgiveness is a key component for emotional healing. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to walk with women through that, through the trauma, helping them mm -hmm. to be able to um, tell what they went through in a supportive, you know, safe environment. I've just seen so many women make such a tremendous turnaround. And it's just been um, amazing to see that. That's incredible. Now, um, as you are in the medical field professionally, um, do you find that uh, there is more openness to link the medical field with the faith-based community? I've been hearing a little bit more about that, actually. Yes, I think there is, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting. As I said, many times studies mm -hmm. are actually showing that biblical principles yeah. are key for emotional, spiritual, physical health, um, you know, it just even for physical health, they're, mm -hmm. they're coming out and saying these things that the Bible says are actually very important. Such as forgiveness. Right, yeah, cause right. It's empowering for you exactly. to be exactly. able to, to forgive. It, re it releases you from a prison. Yeah. An emotional prison. Absolutely. It really does. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, WOVEN. I love uh, the acronym, and that is for what? Women of Victory Experiencing Newness. Yes. So how long has this um, part of your women's, how long has that ministry been uh, active in your church? Oh, our women's ministry has probably been active about 20 years. Oh, you got a lot of history then. <laughs> yes, we Help do. It. Um, it's really um, developed into a multi-generational ministry with mm -hmm. women, young women, all different ages. Uh -huh. I'm passionate about helping other women, right. really looking at different ways we can contribute to the community right. and help the community um, embrace women mm -hmm. in a healthy way and support women. And I love the fact that you say it's multi-generational um, for the younger women to millennials, if you will, to learn from more seasoned women, and certainly with a topic like uh, human trafficking so that um, we know that our younger population, they spend a lot of time on social media, mm -hmm. and we know that that's one of potentially, you know, uh, one of the open doors for uh, becoming victimized because sometimes people are a little bit naive about using some social right. media platforms. Right, it's absolutely a, a a really serious concern. Uh, actually, I just read some statistics recently that said if your child has a cell phone, your child is already being stalked by a trafficker. Oh my goodness. And that is so shocking, but the, the number is the fastest growing arm of organized crime in our country. Mm -hmm. And so the number of stalkers that are out there, the mm -hmm. number of predators that are out there, they're mm -hmm. like just looking uh, for vulnerable young people and so mm -hmm. children um, and so parents really need to be aware and I think that's a hard thing for parents to mm -hmm. grasp. You don't want to think that it's here in our community or right. that it could affect your own mm -hmm. family but but it isn't just in big cities, it's everywhere. Oh, absolutely, yeah, it, it is. That's what we've been talking about throughout this whole uh, this whole episode, is that mm -hmm. it is not just in the larger cities, as you say, mm -hmm. um, the larger metropolitan areas, right. but in smaller communities right. uh, like Alpena, beautiful Alpena, and you yes. think that it wouldn't be, yeah. but it does exist. That's so absolutely it, true. And it is a major, major problem. So, um, you know, going forward with these statistics that we have, and, and 13 years old, that's still so hard to process. I it is know. unbelievable, it's isn't it? It's it, gripping. It is just shocking. Yeah. Um, so what would you um, like to see happen, I guess, in the next couple years? Would you uh, like to see more laws on the books to help people? What is that you would like to see um, as we try oh, to help people find that's wholeness? That's a really good question. Yeah. I think education mm -hmm. is really empowering, and that was one of the reasons why we brought the seminars into Alpena yeah. to educate our community, because mm -hmm. what we found out is that many times it's happening right under your eyes and you just yeah, do not recognize exactly. the signs of it. Exactly. And so I think education of our community to equip people to know what to do if they're suspicious, exactly. if they're concerned, mm -hmm. um, just really continuing in that 
regard and especially educating our children mm -hmm. and again it's a topic that is very difficult is. to um, approach but if we don't make our children aware then they are extremely vulnerable and mm -hmm. they won't recognize what what might be happening through social media or even through friendships sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. So I want to applaud you, um, your organization, the church actually, New Life Christian Fellowship. Thank you for all that you're doing in the community. Thank you for joining, joining me today, Michelle, for this uh, segment to talk about um, what the church and your women's group is doing uh, to help uh, through this, um, this challenge that we have in all communities across uh, the country. So Thank that's been Sherry. Insights for today. Thank you for watching. I'm Sherry Stewart. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.